Hey everyone and welcome to the first Victoria 2 mining lesson on the Iron Workshop. Now Victoria 2 is my favorite Paradox game and it seems like I'm not the only one since a lot of you have chosen Victoria 2 as the game you would like me to do modding lessons for. So here we are. Now before I start giggling like a certain sponge who has met his favorite friend, his squid friend, let's get this lesson started. Squidward! This lesson is going to be very short and very simple since just like with the Hearthstone 4 lessons and the CK3 lessons, we're going to start with the easy stuff and move forward from there. So in this lesson, we'll learn how to create a mod file that will allow you to create your own mod in Victoria 2. Please note that there are some differences in how you mod a game like Hearthstone 4 and Victoria 2 since Victoria 2 actually belongs to the category of the older Paradox games, so some of the stuff is quite different. But there's also a lot of similarities, so if you learned some stuff in my Hearthstone 4 videos, some of it may actually be useful here as well. Alright, so how are we creating this mod file? First of all, we'll need to locate the Victoria 2 installation on your computer. If you're using Steam, that then that installation will be in Steam. And usually it's in C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Victoria 2. Now inside of this folder, there is a folder called mod. So we'll need to go in here and we'll need to create one of these mod files for our own mod. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new folder and that is the folder where I will be putting my mod files, all the changes that I will be making in my mod later on. Let's just call it the test mod. And in here, let's create one of these files that will link to this folder and tell the game that our mod is in this folder. So we'll go to new, text do document, and we'll just call it test mod. Obviously, you can call it whatever you want. Now in here, we're going to make a small change. You see that it says .txt, so I'm going to remove the txt and, go, and I'm going to put .mod, just like this. You should get a warning telling you that you're about to change the file extension. Click on yes, and now we have our own, our own mod file. Now if you don't see the .txt extension, you should be able to change it in view. And in here, there's an option called file name extensions. If you have a different operating system, then you will just need to Google to see how you can turn on file name extensions. Should be quite easy to find. All right, so now that we have our file, we'll need to open it. And in here, we're going to need to fill out some stuff. So the first thing that we'll need to fill in is the name of our mod. So we'll go like this, name equals, and, in, and then we're going to be putting the name in quotation marks. And we'll just call it test mod. Just like this. Next, we're going to need to tell the game the path to where the files of this mod are going to be located. So we'll type path equals, and now you'll need to type the following mod, because all the mods in Victoria 2 have to be inside of the mod folder. And note that this is very different from Hardtime 4, where they're usually in documents, um, Paradox Interactive, and so on. Here, they are actually located in the game itself. So mod, and we have our folder here, test mod. So that is what I'm going to type in here as well. Now, another thing that you may want to include is an option called user, user underscore dear. That's uh, obviously short for directory. And what this will do, it will create another folder in the documents folder that will just have these settings for your mod. So for example, if someone who is playing your mod likes to play it in full screen and not in a window setting or with a different re resolution, then those settings will be saved separately so that they can actually uh, have these settings when they start your mod and they don't always have to change it between the base game and your mod. So in here as well, we can call it test mod uh, just to be consistent. We'll call it the test mod folder. And that's it, we can now save this file. And if we go to Victoria 2 and we start the launcher, 
just like this. You see that now I have a mod here called test mod. So all I need to do is to select it and click on start Victoria 2 and we can now start playing our mod. All right, so as you can see, very basic, very simple. And in the next lessons, we'll learn how to do all the stuff that we've done in other games, like changing flags, changing territories and all of those things. I have to say I'm quite excited about uh, this series uh, because I love Victoria 2 and hopefully you will enjoy these lessons and you will create your own interesting mods for Victoria 2 as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video, lesson or tutorial on the Iron Workshop. Bye bye. We're here to enhance it. Isn't that right, Pat? Yeah, we're here. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. The algorithm and me will be very happy. Here are more videos I make. If you like my stuff, consider subscribing to be notified when new content is available. The Iron Workshop lives and thrives thanks to the continued support of my Patreons. If you're willing and able, you can support me on Patreon for just one buck and get access to exclusive and early content. See you around.